Welcome back. As we have been watching unfold, not just companies, but now also schools working through the best way to implement the rollout of vaccines as they have been approved for kids in the ages now of schoolgoers. And for more on that and the discussions around whether or not they should be mandated, I want to bring on with us today the School Superintendents Association Executive Director Dan Dominich joins us right now. Uh, and Dan, as we've been watching this play out, there have been a few school districts out there, uh, mostly that I've seen here in California, talking about vaccine mandates for, for school children. How are you seeing those talks shape up now uh, as, I guess, uh, superintendents across the nation are facing that same question? Well, there's a lot of excitement of the fact that there is finally a vaccine available for our younger children, basically our elementary aged youngsters. Uh, there was a push over the summer uh, when a vaccine uh, became available for high school students. So uh, districts are gearing up to do that. Many are going to be holding uh, vaccination clinics in the schools, after schools, others with the community, but definitely the push to get as many students vaccinated as possible. Regarding a mandate, uh, I think that's going to take a while before that becomes possible on the part of most school districts. There may be some that may try to do that. Uh, but the majority of school districts will not be mandating that students be vaccinated. They will encourage students to do that. Uh, they will have the vaccination available. Uh, at best, many districts may require it, for example, to participate in extracurricular ac activities like sporting events, clubs, other kinds of situations where they can uh, impose that requirement. But generally, a mandate uh, for vaccinations at this point is probably a couple of years away before they do it as they do now with the polio vaccine, as they do now with measles and many of the other vaccinations that are required in order for students to attend school. I want to ask you, what sort of reaction have you seen from parents? Have they been very responsive and enthusiastic? There was a survey that a lot of parents are very hesitant. They're worried about giving their child a vaccine and they want to wait. What are you hearing and seeing? Same, same thing as, as with all of the things that we've done, whether it be masks or whether it be vaccines or whether it be attendance to school in person, it, it's a split. Uh, and we see that uh, we see that already with the older students that about 60% of those students are now vaccinated. We'll see it again at the elementary level. Many parents are eager to get their kids vaccinated. Others are absolutely reluctant. And unfortunately, that's part of the issue that schools have had to deal with uh, this uh, school year. And actually, we're into the third year school year that's being affected by this pandemic, that there's a lot of division. Uh, on every one of these issues. And, uh, and that's a factor uh, in preventing schools uh, from operating uh, in person on a regular basis as they have to shut down when epidemics break out in the schools, as youngsters are sent home to be quarantined. So this will be an ongoing issue. But bottom line is that the more children and the more staff members that get vaccinated, the better the chances uh, that schools will be able to operate in person on a regular basis. Yeah, and I guess, Dan, you know, having vaccines there, making it easier on everybody is, is probably generally the right way to go. You give everybody the choice, but you make it easier for them to make that choice because they don't need to go that far away. You're already bringing your kid to school. Uh, I do wonder, though, how much of this, uh, as you point out, vaccines and required vaccines, not new for schools. You know, we've been dealing with that for mumps and chicken pox for years now uh, in terms of getting your kids to go to school. you got to have them. Uh, but when it comes to now, we've talked about the politicization uh, of this vaccine mandate and what it means for teachers specifically and everyone else working at schools. Uh, anecdotally, we've heard a lot of quitting. The jobs report last week pointed out that public education employment is down. Uh, what are you hearing in terms of maybe some teachers and staff just saying, look, I, my job was hard enough as is. Having to weigh in on this is just making me not want to do it anymore. What have you seen? Absolutely. Uh, we're seeing a significant staff shortage right now in terms of uh, teachers. Uh, I'm seeing it at our level in terms of school superintendents, the number of superintendents this year that have retired early, that have just quit on the job because of the pressures. And the, by the way, the threats uh, that uh, many uh, school employees now receive from teachers to principals to superintendents over all of these issues, the masking, the vaccines, the critical race theory issue. All of these factors have put tremendous stress on the part of our employees and many of them are just saying, you know, enough is enough. I'm not going to do this, which is unfortunate because we were already facing a staff reduction in terms of teachers. And uh, the, the additional pressure right now 
uh, is that a lot of teachers now have to double up. A lot of administrators are now going back into the classroom to teach uh, because they just don't have the personnel. And by the way, it's not just teachers, it's also cafeteria workers, it's also bus drivers, it's a major concern, uh, as well as all employees in, in the education sector, a huge problem. It's not going to go away anytime soon. And everybody's trying to do the best that they can, as are uh, companies in the private sector that are also facing similar employee shortages. And so I want to ask you, what sort of protocols do you have in place in school for children that do get the vaccine? You know, many adults, when they get the shot, need to take a day off from work. They're not feeling well. What sort of protocols do you have in place for them? And then what do you also think about, uh, you know, kids being offered incentives to take the shot? Is that a good way to go? Well, it is a good way to go if it's going to result in, in individuals and students particularly getting the shot. Uh, you know, for example, I mentioned earlier about their ability to participate in sporting events and other kinds of uh, activities. So again, this is this is an ongoing issue, and the more that can be done, uh, the better it is. But it is uh, the, the the protocol tend to be right now that it very much depends on the level of vaccination in a school. A, a, a clear example: you have a classroom. Every child in that classroom is vaccinated. Well, that reduces the need for spacing, that reduces the, the need to be wearing masks in that classroom. But on the other hand, if you have a classroom where very few of the youngsters have been vaccinated, uh, then masking requirements, spacing requirements are gonna be essential in order to uh, mitigate uh, the spread of the pandemic. So it's very much localized, not just in terms of states, cities, school districts, but even within the schools in the classrooms.